Hi, it's time for a chat about the book prize. It's the winner's going to be announced in um, a few days' time. So I thought I'd just go back over the shortlist and give you the one that the one I would love to win and the one that I think might win because they're different. As always, and you know me, I always get things wrong anyway, because the one I really, 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 really wanted to win didn't even get onto the shortlist, and that was Richard Powers' Playground, because out of re reading the long list, that was, for me, that was the book of this year. But it never even got to the shortlist, so... Um, See, I can get I get it wrong all the time. Um, Percival Everett's James. That was I read that one before the long list was announced. I read it um, before it was released, and I had when I read it then I thought, yeah, this is going to be making the lists this year. It's it's a sort of retelling, reimagining. It's looking at the story of Huckleberry Finn from the perspective of James, the slave. And Percival Everett's writing, it is witty, it's dark, it is multi-layered. And so you have got, he's looking at all sorts of issues in this book. He's looking at slavery, definitely looking at slavery. He's looking at, I suppose, white guilt. Um, the the gullibility of the white people in this because James hoodwinks them the whole time. Uh, in this book, James is well read, he's educated, self-educated, but he talks in the way that he knows the masters want him to talk. So it's almost as though He's, I was going to say manipulating, but I don't think it's manipulating. But he's performing in a way that is expected. But then again, the masters perform in the way that they are expected to do. And so you've got this brutality and violence. And you've got this relationship between James and Huck. Um, Huck, this young boy um escaping from a, an abusive father jim is running away because he's about to be sold and, and so they form an alliance there's a sort they protect each other but there is still jim is still or james is still having to put up this pretense in front of huckleberry finn there is so many layers in this. It is a very, very clever book. There's dark humour, there's brutality, there's... It is an excellent book and one of the I, I earmarked then to be on the lists. Um, then uh, another one is... Oh, I've bookmarked it, but I can't. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, I'll get there in a minute. Orbital by Samantha Harvey. Again, this is a very good, a very beautiful book because you've got the prose in this that is absolutely stunning. This, the imagery, and it's a book about cont uh, contemplation. You've got people, six people in a, in the space station, and you are. The book covers one day when they are looping around the earth. They loop around the earth 16 times. And so they are watching multiple sunsets and sunrises and daybreaks. And, and they watch a typhoon working its way across as well. And... They see boundaries, you know, you, the, the boundaries that countries put up against each other. But from space, there are no boundaries. Um, and it's a meditation 
of humanity and life. And I, I love the technicolor images that they, the imagery that you see, the, the one that stood out for me is fishing boats on an ocean, almost like the stars in a sky, you know. I, I, absolutely beautiful writing in that one. Um, Stone Cold Devotional by Charlotte Wood. Again, a very meditative book. It's like an, an, a diary of an unnamed narrator who has taken herself away on a retreat. She's left her marriage, she's left her career, she's escaped. Initially, she was just going to go away for a week. But four years later, she is still in this retreat as a volunteer. She's not overly religious, she's not embraced the religious lifestyle. But the rituals and the routine are calming. And things happen during this um, this stay of hers. Three visitations, you've got a mouse plague, you've got bones found being returned, and she's got an old schoolmate arriving who when she was at school, who she actually bullied. Um, you see her backstory, you see her relationship with her parents, you see grief, you see shame. Um, and you see almost guilt that she, she, she never had that relationship with her mother because her mother died when she was so young. She, she wishes she'd been older when her mother died. There's a darkness and a despair there, but there's also a meditation. It's a very con contemplative book. Um, moving on to Safe Keep by E. Al van der Weyden, set in 1961 Holland. And this is covered something that I wasn't, I might have been aware of in the background of my mind, but it wasn't something that I really knew about or was aware of so openly. Does that make sense? Um, you've got Isabel and Eva. Isabel is, Isabel and her family have this country house. Um, Isabel is the only one left there now because her brothers have gone off into the city. Um, her brother Hendrik lives with his partner Sebastian and Louis wanders around with a variety of women. Isabel stays at home. She's a very repressed character. She's obsessive about the house, about the things in the house. Um, she's always counting them, making sure they're there, making sure the, the house servant hasn't taken them or broken them or moved them. She, she is obsessive about the house. And when Louis decides that his girlfriend Eva is going to come to stay with Isabel while he goes away, Isabel is so anti this about having somebody else in the house with her. And she constantly watches her because she thinks Eva is going to be stealing because things are starting to go missing. And you get the relationship between these two women developing. Um, it's a very slow burn. It's a very sensual novel, there's a sensuality in it, written in three parts. But the third part is one I, I didn't expect. I didn't see the third part coming. So that was, it didn't have the contemplation that the other books did, that Stone Cold, De Stone Cold Devotional had. Um, Creation Lake by Rachel Kushner. Um, a sort of spy thriller, but again, you've got a contemplative book. Um, Sadie Smith, she's a, a former spy and she was sacked from the federal agency and she now freelances. And she's trying to infiltrate this commune of eco-terrorists um, who are trying to stop corporate farming. The mentor of this group, he lives away and he sends them emails 
talking about almost creation, um, the Neanderthals and the Neanderthal way of life and non-violence. And Sadie's bosses want her to manipulate the action and murder a government official, but uh, the mentor is advocating non-violence. Um, you see some of Sadie's past lives and I find her I found her an unreliable character. I, I like the 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 emails, the 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 Neanderthal bits. But I've said yeah, I found a very unreliable character. I, I wasn't sure about that one at all. I mean, again, I will probably get it totally wrong and this is the one that wins. But for me she wasn't a reliable narrator. Um then held by Anne Michaels. Beautiful imagery. She's there's poetry in here. Um, and it's one that I've now read twice. We start off in 1917 with a man in a trench, in, in one of the trenches, and then looking at his life and how he met his wife. And then you move forward and he's got this photography business and you've got supernatural elements. And you've got jumps over time and the connections to this original guy who was in the trench. Um, you've got links with photography, with war, with nursing. Um, Marie Curie pops up as well. We move into the um, into the future as well. You've got love. It, it, to me, it's a contemplation of love and how it remains even after death. You've got science, you've got faith, you've got physical and spiritual memories. And the held, for me, held is you are held by your memories, you're held by your parents, you're held by your lover, you are held in love by your memories. Um, I thought it was absolutely beautiful. I've read it twice. Well, I, I listened to it once and I've read it twice. Um, I, I listened to it originally and then I read the physical book. And I, this is the one I want to win. My heart wants this one to win. It really, really does. Because after Playground, this, this was the book for me. Um, my head thinks it will probably go to either Percival Everett or Stone Cold Devotional. Um, my heart once held, but my head says it'll be one of those two. One of the other two. Um, it'll probably be one of the other three. But I, I don't know. It's I enjoyed the list this year. I enjoyed the long list and the, I, I enjoyed reading the books this year. I found a lot more in in them this year than um, that I enjoyed. Uh, there's so much. And it was strange that they, there are so many meditative novels in the shortlist. For, for, for me, anyway. Um, I, yeah, for me, fingers crossed it's held. But I think it will be either um, Percival Everett or Stone Cold Devotional. I don't care which one wins, really. I mean, you know, if if either of those won, fine, because I've, I enjoyed them both. Um, they were my one, two, three. Those were my one, two, three. It, you know, out of out of the the six on the shortlist, they were my one, two, three. Held Percival Everett and um, Stone Cold Devotional. That was my one, two, three. So if any one of those wins, fine, but my heart goes to held. Does that make sense or have I been rambling again? If I have, I apologise. Anyway, happy reading and I'll come back 
when it's all announced and um, either full of joy or well, I'll, I'll be pleased whatever wins because any book that gets onto the shortlist is a worthy winner. So happy reading. Take care.